please welcome Sterling K. Brown. What's going on, brother? No. What's going on? It's man, been a, I'm living my best life. It's been a while, life. man. It's nice to see you. You look, you look like you're living your best life, man. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah. I feel good. I'm trying to grow my hair out like you. I, I see it. It's looking I'm looking great. like the black Huey from the boondocks <laughs> up in this piece. I dig it. I oh, like man. it. Oh, Let, man. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, about the movie. Let's do it. Um, a lot of people know you from This Is Us. Yeah. First of all, can, before we go into the movie, congratulations. Congratulations on wrapping it up in style, because a lot of people were sad that the show ended, sure. but they appreciated that it ended well, because there's a lot of pressure. You know, people watch Game of Thrones, they're like, what the hell happened Bruh. there? And people watch, like, no, it can happen. It can happen, yeah, to, it anyone. Can happen to anybody. Were you a little worried? Did you know it would end well? I knew it was gonna end well, because he had a plan to end it in six seasons all along from I the see. beginning. I see. Like, the story was complete. He knew where Rebecca was gonna be at the uh -huh. end. Like, you knew, like, there's this whole timeline that he had from the beginning of season one of how things were gonna play right. out. So there was a, a beginning, middle, and end that made me feel secure as an actor. Yeah, okay, I okay, I like that. And, yeah. then, and then you mm. decided, I've done this, mm -hmm. I've cried a lot. I've cried a lot. You, you have cried. There's a lot of Visine up in the, your boy, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's Visine, I feel like you can do it. I can do it, no, but I'm saying to get my eyes back clear. Oh, get them back clear. After okay, I do it. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was like, I just don't want people to think that no, you no. were like faking it. Shit is real, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. real. Um, and then, and then this movie, I, I was like, wow, Sterling doing, doing comedy now. Okay. No, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I'll tell you why it's amazing. I'll tell you why it's amazing. You tell me, tell me. I'll tell please. you why it's amazing. I've, I've been lucky enough to meet you in real life. Sure. And you're one of the funniest, most charismatic people I know, but everyone on TV knows you, you, you're, this, you know, you're stoic. And yeah. You, you know, you're, and then here you are playing a pasta in, I mean, the movie's ridiculous, it is. It's extremely funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell, me, tell me how the project came about. If, when someone, who came up to you and said, you know what, Sterling, I want you to play a pastor of a mega church that's involved in a scandal and is trying to bring it all back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my manager read it first, and then she said, you should check it out. I think uh -huh. it's something you'd like, because I also so like variety and doing something completely different right. than Randall, right? They did a short. You can find a short, Honk for Jesus short, on YouTube. Okay. So I watched the short, and I was like, this shit is hysterical. I would like to do something hysterical. So then I read the script, and it's funny, and it's also deeper than just being funny, yes. too. Because it's like a critique of the church for people who actually love and grew up in these mega churches. Which you did. Which I did, yeah. but also said there's something that can be improved, quite possibly. Oh, no, definitely. And th this, you know? is some, this is something I always talk about. Anyone yeah. who's grown up in the church knows this. You yeah. know, there, are, there are many um, aspects of religion that have been abused by certain people for their own gain. Yes, sir. You know, so my mom would complain about it. My mom was one, one of the most religious people I've yeah. ever known in my life. I would go to church six or seven times in a weekend. Uh -huh. And my mom would say, we're not going back to that church. And I'd say, why? And she'd be like, well, why, why does that pastor have a Ferrari now? What's going on? Where's the Ferrari coming from? Sure. He doesn't have another job, so where's the Ferrari coming uh -huh. from? I don't see anything in the Bible about Ferraris. You, yeah. you get what I'm saying? I did. And, 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 and so what, what's interesting in this is you're not poking fun at religion. Yeah. You're talking about people who use people's love of religion to make a, a, a buck. That's right. I feel like all human institutions are valuable, whether they're secular yes. or non-secular. You know what I'm saying? There's messages that can be gleaned from them that are important. You take the good, you leave the rest. I like that. Like, you can't find a perfect church. You can't find a perfect government, you know? So that's the way I do it. And so I, my bent is more spiritual than religious at this particular time, because I just pick and choose. My mom prays for my immortal soul, because she thinks I'm going to hell. <laughs> but we cool. That's, she just does that because she loves me. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a power, it's a powerhouse team. You know, it, you, you're playing the pastor. Yeah. You've got Regina Hall, who's playing, you know, the first lady of the church. You she, give is, it up for that. she is one of the funniest human beings who's ever existed. She really is. And then it's produced, I didn't know this until recently, it's produced by Daniel Kaluuya and Jordan, and Jordan Peele. Peele. It's yeah. a powerhouse team. We got a good team. We got a good team. It feels good. So, so talk me through this, because in the clip that we're watching, there, you, you know, you're seeing it, it looks a little bit like a documentary, but the film is, is, is mockumentary style. It's mockumentary style. What happens is the scandal happens before the movie starts, and right. we're trying to figure out what the scandal is. Uh -huh. The pastor and the first lady decided, decide to hire a mock or a documentary film crew to sort of chart their ascendance back to prominence, yes. or so they hope. Because the documentary film crew is like, all right, I want to see what's going on with these people and what makes them tick. Whether they get back to their church or not may be secondary yes. to what he hopes 
that that they'll use the the documentary for. How many takes did you did you have to redo because you were laughing at what Regina was saying? <laughs> I'm pretty good at not breaking. Really? With I'm, Regina? Yeah, I'm pretty good at not breaking. I I don't know what it is because like I feel like when an actor is being funny. I don't want to ruin their take. Oh, you understand I what I'm see. saying? So if I break, it's like, Negro, I got to do this over again. <laughs> <laughs> right? But if you stay in it and just keep the vibe going and feed them more, you never know what kind of, like, oxygen their fire needs I love to, that. like, burn even hotter. So that's, that's all you're trying to do is just feed the fire. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so do you feel like now... Do you feel like you have a little bit of, like, this pasta in you? Do you like, did you pick up some of that, that, that megachurch swag? I would say so a little bit. He, he likes his clothes. Uh, I, I'm starting to like clothes more. Yeah? Yeah, I did. You're, funny story, my son, growing up in the 90s, I used to sag a lot. Like, size 36, you know, shorts, <laughs> even though my waist is like a 32. My son now, when he sees me sagging, he's like, Dad, People can see your under... My son's 11. <laughs> Dad, people can see your under... And literally comes up to me, pulls my pants up... That is so ...and funny. holds them up at their waist. That it's is crazy. So, it's a generational it's shift. It's a generational shift. So now, you know, people try to put your boy in, like, tight fit. Like, this stuff is tight, right? Um, <laughs> But I'm starting to get used to clothes that fit. I came home one day after OJ, and I had, like, some new clothes, and my mama said, well, you finally wearing clothes that fit your body. I'm so happy. I love that. It made her happy. You also have one of the strongest topless games. You, you take your shirt off in this movie. Yeah. No, no, no. This is, like, one of those things where you, you just have to give the credit. You, you take your top off in this movie. Namaste. And you are <laughs> one of the most ripped, not just pastors, but human beings. I was like, wow, Sterling, you've been, you've been, you've been holding out on us. <laughs> You're looking good. I appreciate it, man. I try to take care of myself. That's, that's it. You know what I'm saying? I got an 11-year-old and a 7-year-old, and my, get, my whole plan in life is to be able to play with them as long as I can. I waited a little longer to have these kids. I'm enjoying them so much. They have energy, so you have to have energy to keep up. That's, that's, that's the whole game plan. Man, this yeah. guy over here. Thank you so much for joining me on the show again. Always a pleasure. Great to see you. Such a funny movie.